Good evening. My name is Jack Watson, and I'm the Dean of the College of Physical Activity and Sports Sciences, or as we refer to it, CPAS. On behalf of WVU and the College of Physical Activity and Sports Sciences faculty, staff, and students, I would like to welcome you to the 34th Annual Hall of Fame Induction Ceremony. I'm sorry that for the second year in a row, we will be celebrating this event virtually. However, despite the struggles associated with moving this event to a virtual format, especially doing so very close to the scheduled event, I believe that we have created an experience that is worthy of celebrating the many accomplishments of our inspiring induction class. Tonight is a time to celebrate the lifelong achievements of four CPAS alumni being inducted into the college's Hall of Fame and to pay tribute to this year's Alumni Legacy Award recipient, previously called the Outstanding Alumnus Award. <clears throat> Before we get too far into the program, I would like to make a few housekeeping announcements. The official portion of this ceremony will be conducted without interruption. However, after hearing all of the speeches from our inductees, we will host a question and answer session. You will be able to ask questions of any of our awardees. If you wish to ask a question, please type your question into the questions or chat box at the bottom of your screen at any time during the presentations. I will be serving as the moderator and will monitor and ask the awardees your questions during that portion of the ceremony. At this time, I would also like for each of us to take a moment of silence in honor of Martha Thorne and James Taylor, both of whom were CPAS Hall of Fame inductees who passed away since our ceremony last year. Martha was inducted into the CPAS Hall of Fame in 2006, and James in 2020. Both of these individuals lived inspired uh, lives and were true trailblazers and excellent coaches. Please join me at this time for a moment of silence. This evening, four CPAS alumni will be inducted into our Hall of Fame. These alumni, along with our Alumni Legacy Award recipient, have earned these tributes by bringing honor to WVU and the College of Physical Activity and Sports Sciences through their outstanding accomplishments, personal convictions, high moral standards, and contributions to their professions. They are leaders who have risen to the top of their professions having dealt with a great deal of adversity and struggle to accomplish great things, both personally and professionally. I am so proud of their accomplishments and the fact that their journeys brought them to West Virginia, WVU, and CPAS. I would now like to take a moment to thank the CPAS visiting committee members. Although committee chair Lisa Franson will introduce this group later in the program, I would like to take this opportunity to thank each of you for your continued support, dedication, and most of all, friendship. This is a hardworking group of individuals who give of their time to meet with us within the college and ask and answer difficult questions designed to help ensure that we are reacting to the world around us, 
to provide a quality product and experience for our students. We aspire to be proactive with our decision-making in the college and the members of our visiting committee help us achieve this goal through thoughtful questions, thoughts, and guidance. Their help and support has never been more important than it has been over the past two years. Please know how much I appreciate you and your support for me and the college. And most of all, I cherish the friendships that we have developed. Switching gears, I would now like to talk a little bit about our faculty and staff. At this time in the ceremony, I would generally ask the faculty and staff of the college to stand and be recognized with a generous round of, of applause. It is my pleasure to work with a world-class faculty and staff who are dedicated to the success of our academic programs and the college. These individuals work tirelessly to ensure that our students have what they need to be successful in school and are prepared to be successful in their professional lives upon graduation. These individuals are a lean, mean fighting machine. And while I've always admired this faculty for their dedication and persistence, those words have never rang more true than over the past four semesters while they have been teaching during the COVID-19 pandemic. Throughout this difficult time, this group has maintained their composure through adversity, stayed agile, and have worked diligently to pivot their focus and efforts in a matter of hours to make the necessary changes to keep education moving and everyone safe. In short, this group of faculty and staff have proven, proven themselves to be a very compassionate, professional and adaptable unit. I couldn't ask to work with a better team of professionals. Finally, I would like to personally thank Stephanie Martin, a person with whom everyone in this room has interacted. Stephanie is the ringleader behind setting up this event. She is the real great and almighty Oz, pulling the strings behind the curtain to make everything run smoothly not just for this ceremony, but for everything we do on a daily basis. Thank you, thank you for everything you do to help me and CPAS accomplish our goals. Me personally and the entire college are lucky to have you in CPAS. Normally at this point in our in-person ceremonies, I would ask the past, the past Hall of Fame outstanding alumni and outstanding service award recipients to stand and be recognized. I wish that we had the time to discuss their amazing accomplishments, but if you ever wanna be humbled, please consider going to our website or visiting the Hall of Fame screens in our building to read their bios. I can assure you that these previous awards have been well-deserved. It's now my honor to present to you the 2021 class of Hall of Fame inductees and our Alumni Legacy Award recipient. This year's recipients are Dr. Herbert Amato, Dr. Dana Brooks, Catherine Parson, Joseph Martin, and our Alumni Legacy Award recipient is Dr. Daniel Mahoney. I would like to thank the Hall of Fame and Alumni Legacy Award Selection Committees for their work in selecting this wonderful group of inductees. At the end of the ceremony this evening, I'm sure that each of you will agree with me that these committees did a wonderful job in selecting a most deserving group of individuals for these awards. We hope that you enjoy the ceremony and are as impressed with the awardees as we are. We are proud to claim each of these awardees as CPAS graduates. We will now transition to a few special guests who would like to say a few words of congratulations to the honorees this evening. Thank you. Hello everyone and congratulations to the CPAS Hall of Fame inductees. 
you are joining a select group of successful CPASS alumni and friends whose achievements are both noteworthy and inspiring. This class of inductees is especially outstanding, from educators to entrepreneurs. Each honoree has achieved national prominence in his or her field. I am particularly pleased to see my former colleague Dean Brooks being included among this distinguished group of individuals. As many of you know, Dean Brooks is an inspired leader and a true gentle man who led the college through a period of growth and achievement. Thank you to each of our inductees for shining a bright light on CPASS and on West Virginia University through your achievements and success and for being a positive example for our young and talented students who will follow in your footsteps moving forward. Congratulations and thank you. For 33 years, our university has celebrated the accomplishments of our physical activity and sports science graduates. Many things have changed in 33 years, but tonight's honorees exemplify something that has not changed. The powerful impact that outstanding CPAS graduates make on our state, nation, and world. Herbert K. Amato was Athletic Training Education Program Director at James Madison University and is now Associate Vice Provost. His global stature was demonstrated when he served on the medical staff for the 1988 Olympics. Dana Brooks stayed in the Mountaineer family, serving as CPAS Dean from 1992 until his retirement in 2019. His tenure included expanding degree programs, the creation of an innovative new building, and enrichment for thousands of underprivileged youth through his leadership of the National Youth Sports Program. Joseph A. Martin has won five sports Emmys during his long career with NBC Sports, which recently included directing the 2021 Olympics closing ceremony. He has directed coverage of many golf tournaments, including the U.S. Open. Catherine E. Parson is head women's basketball coach at Central State University, following successful coaching roles at several other universities and service as interim head coach for the WNBA's Washington Mystics. And this year's Legacy Award winner is Daniel F. Mahoney, currently president of Southern Illinois University. During his career, he has also served as associate provost at the University of Louisville, dean at Kent State University, and president at Winthrop University. Daniel was inducted into the WVU College of Physical Activity and Sports Sciences Hall of Fame in 2017, and just this year, he was named an outstanding alumnus. These honorees helped to transform their passions into successful careers that have touched many lives. Their achievements reflect the bold thinking that gives Mountaineers the reputation for going first. I would like to thank the College of Physical Activity and Sports Sciences for hosting this event and for the great work of its faculty and staff in developing visionary leaders, those who honor today and those who will shine tomorrow. Our CPASS Hall of Fame honorees are innovators, they are leaders, they are risk takers, and they are inspirations to all Mountaineers. Hey guys, it's Colson Glover, the Mountaineer mascot. I'm currently getting ready to head out to Baylor to chew on our football team in Waco, but I just want to stop and make a quick video and congratulate the 2021 CPASS Hall of Fame inductees. You guys really are some of our most distinguished alumni, and I cannot be more happy for you that you are finally receiving this honor. So a big congratulations to Herbert K. Amato, Dana D. Brooks, Joseph A. Martin, Catherine E. Parson, and the 2021 Legacy Award winner, Daniel F. Mahoney. Congratulations again from me and everyone at WVU. We are so excited for you. Let's go Mountaineers. Greetings from the CPAS Visiting Committee. We are 18 strong, all graduates in a variety of disciplines who are tasked with offering advice and counsel to assist the college from which we graduated. It is the visiting committee's task to vote in Hall of Fame candidates from a talented pool of graduates. I'm Lisa Morton France and chair of the visiting committee and I'd like to thank you for joining us. Our congratulations go to Kathy Parsons, Joseph Martin, Herb Amato, and longtime Dean Dana Brooks as they enter the Hall of Fame, as well as 2021 Legacy Award recipient, Dan Mahoney. Each of you has served as an outstanding representative of CPAS in the places that your careers have taken you. 
and we are in awe of your collective accomplishments. Here is Hall of Fame Committee Chair Les Pullman, who will emcee tonight's Hall of Fame ceremony. Welcome to the 2021 CPAS Hall of Fame celebration. My name is Les Pullman and I have the pleasure of serving as the chair of this committee. I'd like to recognize other members of the committee at this time. David Taylor, Paul Grace, Kathy Lipkovich and DC Colt. At this time, I'd like to congratulate Herb Amato on his induction into the Hall of Fame. Herb will be introduced by Barry Duell. Good evening. My name is Barry Duell. I'm a member of the West Virginia University College of Physical Activity and Sports Science Visiting Committee. I'm a 1980 graduate of WVU and with a degree in physical education and athletic training. And I've been given the honor to recognize and introduce one of our inductees this evening, Dr. Herb Amato. First and foremost, let me let you know that Herb, Dr. Amato, um, is a close associate and friend, has been for decades. Uh, we're two young men that came out of small towns in West Virginia and hit the bright lights of Morgantown and WU and the Department of Athletics. And um, we were wowed, but we were immediately part of that family. And we really had a great experience at WU in the, in the CPAS and athlete training programs. Um, Herb and I, we were undergrads here in the mid-70s. Um, you know, we don't know where the time went. We stayed close, both professionally and socially. We had many good times together. I want to, show, I want to share a story uh, that Herb often tells, but before I do that, I would be remiss without recognizing what a wonderful father and husband Herb has been to his wife, Laurie, his daughters, Casey, Lindy, and Jesse. Uh, they were the apple of his eyes, and he has been a just an unbelievable father to that family. Uh, the, the story that Herb likes to tell, we were in, uh, it was the day he met my parents, and we were in the Towers Dining Hall, and I had no idea what I'd done wrong that day. However, uh, my parents come storming in to where we were sitting, and they were yelling at me, by the way, my parents are both deaf. I'm a coda, a child of deaf adults. Herb did not know at the time, and he did not understand why they were screaming at me with their hands. He just pushed his chair back, and the next thing I knew, I, he was trying to crawl underneath the table. He was so shocked and surprised in, the, in, the, in that engagement. That experience with the deaf made him interested to maybe continue on, and he did serve as an athlete trainer with three deaf Olympic events, uh, one in um, Taipei, Taiwan, one in Sofia, Bulgaria, and he went with me on a winter deaf Olympics in Kenti Mansi, Siberia. Yes, Siberia and Russia, we were sent away. So I wanna tell you another story about Herb and I and, and some of our pursuits. Uh, we were asked to speak at a, a Mid-Atlantic Athletic Training Conference and we were presenting on the benefits and principles of aquatic therapy and rehabilitation. And we were gonna have a 45 minute lecture followed by about a one hour practical in pool laboratory experience to demonstrate the techniques for exercise resistance and aquatic um, benefit. And lo and behold, we we're like, well, you know, what are we gonna do? We've gotta go in the water and we gotta present. We gotta present first in front of probably over a thousand athletic trainers so we got the bright idea that we'd go into the lecture hall with our Hawaiian shirts and surf, surf pants and we wore lays and flip flops. And sure enough, we got in the lectern and everybody was already at ease and having a good time with what was going to be, we thought, a, a very um, innovative lecture. Um, and of course on the front row, there was our mentor, John Spiker. And I'm sure John, I saw him lean over a couple times talking to Randy Metter and maybe Vinny Stilger. And I think, I think what he was asking was, are we sure these two guys graduated from WVU? Well, yes, John, we did. And another note, uh, when Herb and I started in the mid seventies, John had a long flowing mane of hair to his shoulders. And by 1980, it was gone. I'll just leave it at that. So anyway, with Herb, uh, what a great man, what a great career. 
uh, I could go on and on about the stories we had in the Deaf Olympics and working together at Hanley High School and Winchester versus Harrisonburg High School, uh, the travels that we've had, uh, going to national conferences and being roommates and working with the WU Alumni Athletic Training Association, which we both are very proud of its, uh, uh, its beginning and all how it's prospered. Um, I'll just stop there and say that no one is more deserving of this honor than my great friend, Herb Amato. Herb, congratulations. We love you here at WU, and thanks for ev thank you for everything you've done for CPAS and you've done for the athlete training profession. Thank goodness my childhood dreams did not come true, spending most of my early life in Blacksville, West Virginia, then growing up in Fremont. I could not imagine the things I have done, the places I have seen, and the individuals I have met and hopefully influenced. Wow, my early dreams could never match today's realities. I must truly thank this college, this university, this place for pointing me in the right direction. What started here at WVU, I hope, has impacted the world just a little. I remember my sophomore year in high school taking Spanish at Fremont Senior then again at West Virginia University, taking art history and saying to myself, why? I will never need this stuff. I now look back and I'm a little embarrassed that my mind and my world were so small. To support this statement, I have several experiences that I would like to share with you, things that I could not have imagined as a child, but were made real by my experiences here. Having to use two interpreters at the same time in Taiwan to get a point across, speaking in English, having it translated by one interpreter into Mandarin, and then by the, that interpreter from Mandarin to a second interpreter to communicate to a deaf athlete. Watching the sunrise alone on Easter morning in Siberia on top of a mountain, feeling the presence of God. Traveling to multiple Muslim countries several times to work with them on issues related to accreditation within higher education. Taking a three and a half hour, $500 taxi ride from Madrid to Zaragoza, Spain to get to a meeting on time because the train, the bus, nor a connecting flight were options. Presenting to about 80 people in Pristina, Kosovo with the entire back road set up with interpreters translating my words into Albanian, Serbian, and German. Being in Harrisonburg, Virginia, Skyping with colleagues from Kosovo receiving a telephone call from my employer in Abu Dhabi, six and nine time zones away from home. Having the United States Baseball Federation write my newborn daughter, Lindy, a thank you note for allowing her father to miss her birth while traveling around the world with them as part of the pre-Olympic tour in 1988. In that letter, she was given an open invitation to try out for a spot on the USA baseball team. She never took them up on it. During my first trip out of the country in 1987, buying a doll in traditional clothing for my oldest daughter, Casey. Over the years, I have brought her over a dozen dolls in their traditional country clothes. Now with her travels, what a collection she has accumulated. This college, this university, this place helped give me these opportunities and experiences to look back and sometimes to be embarrassed by but always to be grateful for. At this time, I must thank my wife, Lori, for allowing me to leave home for days, weeks, and even months. I am sure many times she felt like a single mother. Thank you. To change the subject a little, I have visited over 100 campuses in the United States as a consultant, as an instructor, as an athletic training program site visitor, and with athletic teams. However, when my youngest daughter, Jessie, visited WVU as a prospective student in the fall of 2008, I said to myself, I choose WVU again. She is now a WVU alumnus. Even though she was not a CPAS graduate, she got many dinners as my guest at visiting committee meetings over the years. Also, she and I knew that many people in this college would drop whatever they were doing to help her while in Morgantown. I want to give John, Save, Jack, and Ben special thanks for knowing that I could always count on them. In 2012, my three daughters were living in Florence, Italy, Charleston, South Carolina, and Morgantown, West Virginia. I would tell my friends, oh, how I wish I was in Morgantown. 
that usually got a moment of silence. And then, are you kidding? No, I was not. My first professional job was a physical education teacher and athletic trainer in Durham, North Carolina. I remember coming home and telling my wife that the students in my ninth grade PE class had to play with me. Today, I'm coming home and then telling her that universities and countries in Eastern Europe, Eastern Africa, and the Middle East are requesting my help. All of these experiences started with the education that I received from this college, this university, this place. The two men that most shaped my professional life are both CPAS graduates. They are John Spiker, who most everyone in this room knows, and Bob De Lorenzo, a 1962 graduate. He was my teacher, my coach, my summer employer, and my mentor. I cannot thank these two men enough. In addition to these two men, every job I have taken 40 years plus of my working career has been touched by a CPAS graduate, either by hiring me, recommending me, and or pushing me to apply. I could not have ever imagined how one place could influence my life in so many ways. I have heard the quote, a good friend will bail you out of jail at 3 a.m. A really good friend is sitting beside you in that same jail cell saying, what a great time that was. Wow, now how are we gonna get out of here? Thankfully, none of my mountaineer friends and I ever needed to be bailed out of jail at 3 a.m. However, I'm still very close to several people who I met at this college, this university, and this place between 1974 and 1979. We have traveled the world together, giving professional presentations at all levels. Have a patent pending for a modification to a piece of rehabilitation equipment and started a small business that is still going since 1995. It all started here, this place, Morgantown, West Virginia. The last experience I would like to share truly emphasized how this place has influenced my life. It was during summer orientation for first year students at James Madison University. I was a speaker with the privilege each day to follow the president's remarks, to talk to students and their families about the value of general education, and to think about lifelong learning and not just the first job. As I wrapped up, Mitt wished everyone well and gave them instructions on where to go next. A mother of one of the incoming freshmen walked up to me. She said, her, I'm Sally, your next door neighbor from McLean Avenue. We had not seen each other since we had graduated from WVU. The conversation was pleasant. Towards the end of the conversation, she stopped in mid-sentence and asked, how did you get here? I stumbled a little to answer a question. However, the answer could have been as simple as this college, this university, this place. When most people are asked, let's go, they usually answer where. However, when we are asked the same question, let's go, the answer is always mountaineers. I am very proud to be a mountaineer. However, today it's as much about this college, this university, this place as it is about me. Tonight is for all the alum that could have never imagined how one place could change their lives and open the world to them. I want to thank you for the opportunity to be in front of you. It is, it is a great honor and I will cherish forever. At this time, I'd like to congratulate Dana Brooks on his induction into the CPAS Hall of Fame. Dana will be introduced by Bill Alsop. Good evening. My name is Bill Alsop. We're here tonight to honor a group of outstanding inductees to the CPAS Hall of Fame. First, I would like to commend the CPAS Hall of Fame Selection Committee for their diligent review of candidates and the selection of these outstanding inductees. Second, I would like to extend my congratulations to each of the inductees. West Virginia University and CPAS are very, very proud of your accomplishments. It is now my distinct honor and privilege to introduce Dr. Dana Brooks, Professor and Dean Emeritus, for induction into the College of Physical Activity and Sports Sciences Hall of Fame. I have known Dana for 47 years. He was a former master's and doctoral student of mine. He was a former 
fellow faculty member and professional colleague of mine. He was my dean and my former boss, but most importantly, throughout this almost half century, he has been my friend. Dana Brooks retired in 2019 after 26 years as Dean of the College of Physical Activity and Sports Sciences, one of the longest tenure of any deanship at WVU in the modern era. Dana's 45-year journey at West Virginia University began in 1974 when he was a graduate student. After the completion of his master's degree in 1976, he entered the doctoral program and completed his EDD in 1979. His dissertation focused on team cohesion of successful high school basketball teams in West Virginia. His data collection took him all over the state, but primarily to the powerhouse programs in the southern coal fields of West Virginia, where he gained a true cultural understanding of sport in rural America. Dana's dissertation, as you can imagine, was extensive. This led to a comment by Dr. Andy Ostro years later. I quote, I do believe that your dissertation was the longest and most comprehensive I have read in my 35 year career at WVU. Most comprehensive are the key words here. Dana's philosophy was all about inclusion, not exclusion, no stone unturned. Regardless of the challenge, his drive to be thorough, exact, and accurate was always paramount. During the 80s, Dana climbed the ladder of the faculty ranks from assistant professor to a fully tenured professor in 1988. From 1987 to 1993, Dana served as associate dean, assuming the deanship of the then School of Physical Education in 1993. Dana's career from start to present day was never about one task or one immediate concern. It was about everything. The pile on his desk was the evidence. Dana's office door was always open. He had time for everyone and he proudly shared his latest piece of sports memorabilia during a visit or at the conclusion of a meeting. I was always amazed to see the volumes of work he had in progress. On most occasions when entering his office, you could hear his voice, but you couldn't actually see him because he was buried behind a mountain of paperwork. I'm still convinced he had a sleeping bag hidden somewhere in that office because it seemed humanly impossible for one man to complete so many projects during normal working hours. Dana was the exception to the role we envision as a dean in higher education. Why? Because he continued teaching graduate classes, writing grants, conducting and publishing research, writing books, making scholarly presentations, creating a museum of African-American sports memorabilia. And in the 80s and early 90s, he was the sponsor of the WVU Fencing Club. He managed the old pros perennial all-campus championship intramural team for over a decade. One of Dana's passions was his involvement in professional organizations. He was a West Virginia state president, Midwest district president, national president of the American Alliance for Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Dance. Positions that in and of themselves demand a full-time commitment. He continued to serve on the board of directors at the national level for many years. Dana's honors and awards for service and leadership are truly amazing and inspiring. He has been recognized at all levels, internationally, nationally, and at the state level. Most recently, he was the 2018 recipient 
of the West Virginia University's Distinguished Service Award. In addition to his many attributes, his concern for human equality and social justice was and is at the forefront of both his professional and personal life. His love of sports sociology, the study of racism in co collegiate sports, highlight his publications and presentations. Dana has become the authority on racism in collegiate sport. And so, this has been Dana's life. Dana has met every challenge in his career with optimism and perseverance. Here's a man whose life has been exemplary in every way. He poured his heart into everything that he did. The impact that he has created has in some way inspired and touched everyone who knows him. I am honored to present Dr. Dana Brooks for induction to the CPAS Hall of Fame. Thank you. Greetings, friends. It is an honor to be inducted into the College Hall of Fame. I'd like to thank the Outstanding Visiting Committee, Dean Jack Watson and W.U. Thank you for your support. Also, I'd like to recognize the new inductees. I have a great team to work with, including Lynn Hausner, former Associate Dean, Great scholar, Jack Watson, former chair, associate dean, now dean of the college, James Hannon, also a former associate dean, now dean at Kent State University, Bobby Wada, a former chair and now associate dean, Bill Sop, my mentor, also a co-founder of FIT, great scholar. Sharon Sissler, very hardworking, in charge of the college budget. And Jan Pollitt, my friend, goes beyond the call of duty, very caring, giving person. Tracy Wheeler, also a budget guru, hard worker. Stephanie Martin, now secretary in Dean's office, very caring giving. Also, Linda Shaw, former secretary and great typist. Thank you, my friend, for your support. Also had a number of outstanding mentors, including Bill Douglas, former dean. He's the author of a book of the school, History. Also, Bill Sub, a former chair and a, my faculty advisor. And the Astro, also one of the founders of FIT, a great teacher and scholar. Ron Allhouse, good man, a great scholar man. Thank you, Ryan, for your support. Fight Fell, an icon, a world class leader. Jean Corm, gentleman Jean, also a faculty member and former head coach of W football. John Seaman, also a former W faculty member. Coach Kitty Blakemore was a head coach of women's basketball. Coach Martha Thorne, also a great coach in charge of women's tenth at W. You all changed my life. So thank you very much, my friends. Working together, we have achieved much, including new name for the college, more endowments, more name rooms, more faculty staff, and more student scholarships. And yes, we have a brand new building. Thank you, Pat Phil. Looking toward the future, Sam Cook, the singer once said, change is going to happen. But remember, it's about students. Be mindful of the vision, mission, and core values. 
but don't ever forget our legacy of our faculty, staff, students, and alumni. I am blessed. Thank you for the honor. Yay, Mountaineers. At this time, I'd like to congratulate Joseph Martin on his induction into the CPAS Hall of Fame. Joseph will be introduced by Mike Parsons. Hello, I'm Mike Parsons. Do you ever remember when the, the first time you met somebody or exactly where you were when something big occurred? Well, I remember exactly the time and place when Joe Martin and I had our first conversation. It was football media day in 1993 at Mountaineer Field. Joe had just been hired as a graduate assistant for the Mountaineer Sports Network and was assigned to our television crew. And I remember asking him, I said, what do you wanna accomplish during your time with MSN during your graduate school years? He said he wanted to be an announcer. He wanted to be Jack Fleming, a Tony Caridi. And I told him, I said, Joe, don't you realize that with, with video and television, the guy behind the camera, the producer, the director has more power. They're the storytellers when it comes to video coverage. Plus there's a lot more opportunities for you in the video world behind the camera. Fortunately, Joe figured it out on his own during his time in Morgantown as a graduate student. I like to think that Joe learned a lot during his years at WVU. He took every challenge. He worked very hard. He also partied pretty hard. Joe produced the first hard knock style video of WVU football when they covered Mark Bulger's final season as a Mountaineer. He was the guy who produced that as a freelance employee for MSN. After earning his master's degree in sports management in 1996, Joe began a career at NBC Sports as an intern and a freelance employee working the Atlanta Olympic Games. But since then, Joe has worked the NBA Finals, he's worked the, the Super Bowl, he's worked 14 Olympic Games. But in 2007, Joe began directing golf for Golf Channel and NBC. He is now the lead director for golf in NBC Sports. And since then, he's directed the U.S. Open, the Open Championship, the Players, and also the FedEx Cup. Just last month, he directed NBC's coverage of the Ryder Cup where the USA prevailed over Europe. His Olympic assignments have been snowboarding, extreme skiing, and the high-profile swimming events. Joe's career has literally taken him across the world. And along the way, he's won five Emmy Awards. So I think we all can agree Joe has figured it out. All along, Joe has remained loyal to the university. He remembers his roots in Morgantown, and he certainly remembers the wings of Crockett's. So Joe, I'm so proud of you and what you've accomplished. WVU is proud of your many, many, many accomplishments. Thanks, Mike, for that truly wonderful introduction. At least I hope it was wonderful because I'm recording this and you recorded that. I actually have no idea what you might have said, but let's hope it was all good. In all seriousness, Mike gave me some of the best advice I ever received when I was an intern with the Mountaineer Sports Network. One night while we were editing Mountaineer Magazine, about three weeks into my internship, Mike turned to me and said, Joseph, you know, there's a lot more jobs behind the cameras than in front of the cameras. Because up until that point, I thought I wanted to be an on-camera personality. And as you can tell by watching this, I am definitely not very good at that. So Mike, thank you for that advice. And truly what an honor it is to be here alongside everyone that has been inducted into the CPAS Hall of Fame in the class of 2021. And what an honor it is when I think about all the people who have been members of this Hall of Fame in the past, people that were inducted like Kitty Blakemore, a true pioneer in women's athletics, and gentleman Gene Corum, the football coach who first welcomed black athletes onto the football team here at West Virginia, and Dale Ramsberg, the longtime baseball coach at WVU. In fact, Rammer came to see me play my senior year of high school, and uh, he left very underwhelmed by my um, pinch hitting bases loaded walk performance. But nonetheless, he stuck around and talked to my mom and I after the game for about 15 minutes because previously, four years earlier, he had given my brother, Ken Smith, a scholarship to pitch at West Virginia. My brother made the most of his opportunity going 21 and one and 
leading Rammers team to the NCAA tournament. And that was actually a good lesson for me to learn because it taught me that when you're given an opportunity to make the most of it. So when I followed in my brother's footsteps to attend West Virginia as an undergrad, I already had some knowledge of some of the people that worked in the athletic department, including Shelly Poe. And then I met Michael Fergale and I, I worked throughout my undergrad career on game days in the press box, handing out stats at both football and basketball games. But after I graduated with a degree in journalism, I still didn't have what, well, you would call a real job. So I needed to do something else. And that's when I came back as an intern for the Mountaineer Sports Network. And it was there working with professionals day in and day out, such as Scott Bartlett and Greg Schock and the great late Murph Tinsley, where I really, really learned firsthand about what goes into making good television. So I would like to say thank you to all of them for all the help that they gave me. And that's also when Mike gave me another piece of advice and I, I learned that you always take advice from Mike. And he said, you know, Joe, you could stick around and get your master's degree and become a graduate assistant in the athletic department. So when my internship was up, I applied and tried to get into Doc Branch's sports management class. And I actually was welcomed. And as a graduate student, learning from all the great instructors at this school, like Dr. Branch and of course, Dr. Brooks, I had the opportunity to really gain knowledge into what went on in sports, not just in broadcasting, but everywhere. What, in, what went into an event on game day and what made people want to come back and attend the sporting event? As Doc Branch would say, it's not about winning or losing, it's about the game day experience. And then he'd go on to say, and isn't that neat? So Doc, thank you for everything that you taught me through the years. And there's one other person that I would like to thank that was a member of the school at that time and who also is in the Hall of Fame, class of 2020, and that's Gary Quinn. Without him, I would have never made it to NBC Sports because he opened doors for me there to become an intern. And then that led to many bigger and greater things. And if I've had any modest success in television, a lot of the thanks goes to the people who helped me get to the next step along the way. So Gary, thank you very much. And finally, there's one other person that I really need to thank, and that's my wife and the person producing this Zoom right now. And she is playing me off the stage with the West Virginia fight song. But Holly McClure, without you, I could not do any of this. So I wanna say thank you and cheers ears. At this time, I'd like to congratulate Catherine Parson on her induction into the CPAS Hall of Fame. Catherine will be introduced by Berkeley Gore. Good afternoon. My name is Colonel Berkeley Gore, U.S. Army retired, and it is both an honor and a privilege to be able to introduce to you a woman of high moral character, integrity, and a true professional, Kathy Parson. Kathy was born on May 4th, 1961, and I've known her for over three and a half decades. During that time, her coaching career paralleled my military career, and we were full of highs, lows, and life-changing situations. Being from a large family, Kathy's parents instilled in her the competitive work ethic that she still possesses today. Kathy is from Hagerstown, Maryland, where she attended North Hagerstown High. She was a three-time Washington County Player of the Year, and named to the high school All-American squad both her junior and senior seasons. In 1979, Kathy became the first female athlete to receive an athletic scholarship at West Virginia University. During her four year stay at WVU, she became one of the school's best players in history, scoring a school record 2,128 points. As a result of her accomplishments, Kathy was a three-time Mountaineer MVP, three-time All-Big East selection. In 1982, she selected, was selected to be Honorable Mention All-American. She also was the first woman to ever be a member of the WVU Sports Hall of Fame and have her jersey retired. Kathy is a Mountaineer through and through, and in my opinion, she would love the opportunity to serve in any capacity at our alma mater before her career is complete. 
After graduation, Catherine was one of 20 players selected to try out for the Harlem Globetrotters, and she also played a year with the American Basketball Association Virginia Waves. She moved on to become an assistant coach at Providence University, where she was stayed between 1985 and 1988. And she earned her first head coaching job at Christopher Newport, where she compiled a record of 183 wins versus 83 losses. And she won the Dixie Intercollegiate Athletic Conference twice. In 1998, she moved on to the WNBA as an interim head coach for the Washington Mystics. In her next assignment, Kathy was served, served as the associate head coach at the University of Richmond. In 2000, Kathy was selected to be the women's head basketball coach at Howard University. During her eight-year stay at Howard, she led the Lady Bisons to a two regular season MEAC titles and an MEAC tournament title, and she was named the MEAC Coach of the Year in 2001. Kathy also spent coaching stays at both Frostburg and Stratford University prior to becoming the current head women's basketball coach at Central State University. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure and honor to introduce Kathy Parson. Good evening. Thank you so much for this opportunity to actually express myself with such gratitude for this opportunity to be inducted into the CPAS WVU Hall of Fame. It is an esteemed honor to be with you tonight, to have this opportunity to share with you why this is so vital and so important to me. First, I want to thank the committee. I want to thank all of those who've been inducted previously and all the inductees tonight. Congratulations to each of you. Just want to say that it's such an honor to be a part of such an elite group of great student athletes. I want to say that I want to thank Dana Brooks, who actually has retired from the CPAS program, but was inducted in last year's class. I just want to show forth my gratitude toward him as a friend, as a colleague, Dr. Brooks was at West Virginia University while I was there. He's originally from my hometown of Hagerstown, Maryland. Our paths have crossed, have crossed and we've been like um, brother and sister when it comes to him being a big brother and me being that one who looked up to him for guidance and support. So I certainly want to thank him for the role that he plays in my life then and now. I'm grateful for that opportunity to look at him as a true example for things to do in an academic way. And um, just being from home and, and knowing the things that he achieved in his life, I could do as well. So it means the world to me to know that Dr. Brooks was before me and he's been inducted. And I just want to thank you, Dr. Brooks, for all that you've done for me. And then to the search committee, uh, the committee that put this together, I want to say thank you for all that you all have done uh, for me through the process of just getting me to get this video in and um, to give an account for why this is so important to me. One of the other things that I think is really important for the Dr. P Dr. Brooks piece is that he also would invite me to speak in his classes annually. And of course, that only catapulted my visibility on campus. So I would come back and speak to the student athletes. And that was such a tremendous uh, input and boost for me as a former student, as an instructor, to be able to give insight and also to give examples of a life lived as a woman in sport. So I certainly want to make sure I, I, I make sure that's very clear on tonight. For family and friends who are listening tonight, thank you for your support and being a major part of what's going on tonight. I appreciate you. For the gentleman who is my good friend and a former colonel um, in the Army, Berkeley Gore, thank you for your great introduction tonight. And uh, we appreciate all that you've done as a servant 
and someone who has served our country. We certainly appreciate your efforts as well. And I appreciate your friendship over the many years. Thank you so much for the part that you play. To my student athletes, I am the head coach at Central State University. To my athletic director who has been 100% supportive of this evening to make it available for my student athletes to be on by virtue of Zoom. So we thank her for what she's done to be of support for this evening to my assistant coaches, whether that is uh, Coach Tierra Floyd and Coach Pamela Walker for what you all bring to our program. This is a great opportunity for us at Central. The Marauders at Central State University are giving me this opportunity. What's so unique about it is I've recruited 13 student athletes who are in what we call a SESTA program, which is an exercise science program where academically these young women have been given academic scholarships because they show forth themselves worthy to obtain these scholarships. So it's a special place. And then of course, athletics backs it up for these young women to pay very little, if anything, to go to school at Central. Why is this important? The CPAS program at WVU that has inducted me tonight allows me to feel a sense of ownership and as a, a pioneer. So for me to be able to recruit other young women with the idea of women in sport, women who can be leaders in our communities, this is for me just another level of being able to show forth the level of excellence that women do have. So to my team, all of you that are watching tonight, thank you so very much for what you're bringing to the table for me this year and the great things that we're gonna do in our future. So I thank you so much. For those of you that know my journey, understand everything that I've done in sport, but the academic piece is also vital to me because I've grown tremendously in that way as well. So once I finished this doctorate degree and I've gone from you know playing professionally, playing, being the all-time leading scorer in the history of women's basketball there, it just makes this night even more special because I realize I am well-rounded and I'm truly humbled by this opportunity and this portion of life at this stage of my development as a person to see these things unfold. And I'm so happy for this opportunity to be able to receive the fruit of my labor. So it's really important. I thank you, all of you that know that I, I live to do great things because I truly believe all things are possible to them that believe. So I'm believing for tremendous things. I thank the committee. I thank everyone that was associated, every inductee, everyone that caused something good to happen tonight. Thank you all for all the greatness that I feel, the energy of love and joy that we all are extending tonight. Thank you so very much and have a great evening. Thank you. I would like to take a moment to thank the members of the Alumni Legacy Awards Selection Committee for all of their hard work and dedication with selecting this year's Legacy Award winner. The members of this committee include Committee Chair Judy Hayes, Ed Pastelong, Bill Douglas, John Mallory, and Jean Erian. I'm sure that you will agree with me that they made a wonderful choice this year. At this time, I would like to welcome Dr. Dennis Howard, who will be introducing this year's CPAS Legacy Award winner, Dr. Dan Mahoney. Good evening, my name is Dennis Howard. I'm a Emeritus Professor of Marketing and Sports Business at the University of Oregon. I'm honored and delighted uh, to introduce Dan Mahoney as you celebrate his induction into your Hall of Fame. We first met in 1992. At that time, I was the director of the graduate program in sport management at Ohio State University. Dan had applied to our PhD, PhD program. I invited him to campus for a visit. We both uh, remember vividly uh, that first meeting. Dan recalls that he was working really hard to make a very, very positive impression. 
five minutes into the interview, I was thinking, oh my God, we gotta land this guy. He's so remarkable. And fortunately we did. And I've had the good fortune to remain in contact with Dan over the past 20 plus years to be an eyewitness to his many achievements. Dan finished his doctoral degree in 95 and joined the faculty in sports administration at the University of Louisville as an assistant professor. That's the entry or lowest rung on the tenure track ladder, as many of you, many of you know. I, I mentioned that humble entry point because eight years later, Dan was serving as that institution's associate university provost. From my experience, that kind of promotional advancement at a large university normally is at least a 15 to 20 year journey. His meteoric rise was remarkable and speaks to his many, many amazing qualities. Oh, and on the way to the provost office, Dan was asked to serve as the interim dean of the College of Education at Louisville, which prepared him for his next role. In 2008, uh, Dan became the dean of the College of Education at Kent State University, which he served in remarkable fashion for seven years. In 2015, Dan was ready to take on another challenge. He became the president of Winthrop College, and he thrived uh, on that leader, in that leadership leadership role, excuse me, while his list of accomplishments as president would fill pages. I know the two achievements of which he is most proud are, one, within the first three years, the four and five year graduate rates at that institution reached the highest level in the school's history. He also implemented a highly successful faculty and staff diversity program against considerable headwinds and that has had a remarkable impact, an enduring impact on that campus over the past several years. Well, in, the March, in March of 2020, Dan took on an even greater challenge. He became the president of the Southern Illinois University Higher Education System. He's now the CEO of a nearly billion dollar enterprise with overseeing three campuses, including a medical school, and nearly 30,000 students. Of course, his timing could have been a bit better. <laughs> Two weeks into the job, he found himself in the midst of a COVID outbreak, an unprecedented crisis. But as always, Dan Rye rose to the challenge. He was so successful in mitigating the impact of the virus that at the start of the 2020-21 academic year, the SIU Carbondale, the biggest campus in that system, achieved the highest retention rate in the history of that university. A remarkable achievement uh, given the, the circumstance he was operating under. It takes a very special person to achieve this record of continuous success. When I think about Dan's personal attributes, the first thing that comes to mind is his steady, calm demeanor. I've never seen Dan flustered. He's self-effacing, a great listener, smart, kind, empathetic, always focused on serving others. He has the remarkable ability to pull people together to get things done. And as a result, he's made a huge and enduring impact at every step of his amazing professional journey. And I'm sure he's got lots more to contribute in the years ahead. He exemplifies the very highest standards you've set for the membership in your Hall of Fame. You've made a great choice. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'd first like to say thank you to the selection committee. Uh, this is really a tremendous honor. And when you look at the people who've won this award in the past, I'm, I'm clearly in great company. So thank you for this. Um, yeah, I've won several individual awards in my life, but I always say every award I receive is really a group award because I don't accomplish anything without the help of others. Um, while I don't have time to thank everyone tonight, there are a few people I would like to acknowledge. Um, first, my family, my parents, Dan and Kathy. Uh, the lessons I've learned from them have had an impact on me as a person and as a leader. Um, and their support, as I made many changes in my life, including leaving accounting, not knowing what I was going to do next before I went to West Virginia, uh, they've always been there for me. Throughout my career in the last about 30 years of my life, the most important person by far has been my wife, Laura. Uh, she is the person I rely on the most. She's the person I seek advice from the most. Um, and again, has had a 
real impact on everything that I do more than I think most people realize. So thank you very much to you, Laura. Um, to my kids, Gavin and Elena, um, again, they've always been very patient. I spent a lot of time with other people's kids uh, and they've been patient with that, uh, but I enjoy every moment I get to spend with them and, and they've made my life uh, really special. I've been fortunate to have a lot of great mentors in my life. Dennis Howard introduced me earlier. He was the one who really taught me how to be a great researcher and a great teacher, uh, and he continues to be a, just a, a great supporter as I've gone through my career. Um, I'll talk later about the West Virginia people, but I do want to say it's really nice to receive this award the same night as both Dallas Branch and Dana Brooks are being recognized with awards as well, because they are two people who totally had an impact on me. When I was at the University of Louisville, we were built, able to build one of the best programs in the country, and it was largely because I was surrounded by a great group of faculty. Uh, and then I moved into the provost office and, and once again had a great group and we made it through an accreditation visit quite successfully because of the people I worked with every day. I then went to Kent State as a dean and I had a great group of deans, great group of colleagues, very collaborative. You don't always get that with deans, but they were really a great group to work with. And then I had presidents and provosts I worked with who gave me opportunities to do things that not every dean gets a chance to do. And it really prepared me for the next step when I went to Winthrop. And then Winthrop, once again, I was, I was fortunate to have some great vice presidents who all knew their areas better than I did. Um, and so really relied on their advice a lot to make some of the decisions we did and to guide the university forward. And worked with a great group of faculty and staff who showed me what it was like to truly put students first in everything we did. And, I learned a lot from that experience. And then I've been at Southern Illinois University for the last uh, year and a half. It's been a challenging year and a half to say the least, um, but we've made it through it and actually done quite well. We're on enrollment, um, kept our campus safe, and it really was, again, working together as a team and the people I was surrounded with made that a lot easier. When I look back at West Virginia University and my experience in the College of Physical Activity and Sports Studies, the things I think about was certainly the fact that I felt welcome from the time I started. For the first time, I made a phone call to ask about the program. The woman who I do not know who was who answered the phone made me feel like I was the type of student they wanted there, and it got me encouraged to apply. Uh, when I came for the visit, I uh, stayed with a friend of mine from my wrestling days and right away felt like West Virginia was home. And even in the summer, um, when I was finishing up my graduate program, I moved into the fraternity house and immediately felt part of that chapter. And they only charged me uh, $25 a week for rent. So it was the best rent I ever had as well. Uh, but it really was the people associated with the program and, and the university that had a big impact. Craig Walker uh, gave me a great experience in the athletic department with a graduate assistantship, which also helped pay for my education, which I really wasn't sure how I was going to do. Uh, so thank you very much to Craig. Uh, Dallas Branch. I uh, really learned a lot from Dallas about how to be a better writer, how to uh, run a program. Again, a lot of things we did at Louisville were things that I saw Dallas do and really took with me there. Um, Andy Ostra was the first person who ever suggested to me that perhaps I wanted to be a university uh, professor instead of being an athletic director, which is what I thought I wanted to do. So I thank him for that. Uh, Bill also did an uh, independent study with me in the summer so I could finish up and I just appreciate his, his graciousness on that. And then Dana Brooks, uh, when I had his class, he talked to me the first time about writing for publication, which I never thought I'd be capable of doing. Um, and again, just watching him teach and working with him, I uh, wanted to be a faculty member even more. So the people of West Virginia had a, a really great impact on me. So really, I would not be here tonight without all of the people I mentioned, and frankly, many, many more. Um, but I also clearly would not even be anywhere close to where I am today if it was not for the people of West Virginia University in the College of Physical Activity and Sports Studies. Uh, again, it was only a year that I spent in West Virginia, but that year had a tremendous impact and, and without question forever changed my life. So again, thank you for the recognition um, and thank you for all you've done for me. Wow, what an amazing group of honorees. I knew that their stories would be humbling, impressive and awe-inspiring, but they didn't disappoint. Tonight's recipients really are the best of the best. Now, this is one of my favorite parts of the Hall of Fame ceremony, when I get to talk about how special this year's honorees are. I have to start by saying that we are proud of each of you and how well you have represented CPAS and WVU. You are all wonderful role models for our current students. Collectively, you have fought through adversity, discrimination, and hardship to achieve your successes in academia, athletics, coaching, and network broadcasting. 
through your talks, we were able to see the qualities that we have come to expect from mountaineers. You are visionary leaders, pioneers, innovators, risk takers, and team builders. And you have not been afraid to go first. You have shown the ability to be humble, hungry, honest, flexible, listen to and learn from the guidance of significant others, and to be very adaptable. In short, you are role models for all of us to follow. Now, each of these honorees spoke about the importance of family and friends and the support that they received from others to help them be successful. I'm also happy to know that all of the honorees found this type of support and encouragement within the walls of CPAS. And that even though, even through all of their travels and successes, they have not forgotten their CPAS roots. This has always been how I have experienced CPAS. So it's great to know that others feel the same way. CPAS is a student-centered college and everyone within the college works hard to put students first and to support them on their career journeys. Some of the thoughts and guidance that I heard tonight from the honorees included, don't be afraid, afraid to take risks. Surround yourself with a solid team that's all pulling in the same direction as you. Seek out environments where you and your goals are supported. Work hard. Be a lifelong learner. Respect those who lead you as well as those you lead. And never forget to tell others you are thankful for their support and guidance. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone involved for taking the time to film their talks and for putting a great deal of effort into making this experience special. Although not in person, this was truly a wonderful event. Once again, a big thank you goes out to Stephanie Martin for all the time and effort that she put into coordinating this event, organizing and editing the clips and running this webinar. You did a wonderful job, thank you. It's easy to see what the Hall of Fame and Alumni Legacy Award Committee saw in each of our honorees this evening. We are so proud of each of you for what you have accomplished from your beginnings in CPAS. We are happy to share in your successes and to count you as CPAS alumni. You are wonderful representatives of CPAS and WVU. I personally have learned a great deal from each of you. Now this concludes the formal portion of our ceremony this evening. We will now move to the question and answer portion of the ceremony. Please feel free to type any questions that you would like to ask uh, the honorees into the question and answer tab at the bottom of your screen. I will be moderating this portion of the event and will ask the honorees your questions. Thank you. Okay, well, welcome everybody to the question and answer portion of our, uh, of our Hall of Fame induction ceremony this evening. I really wanna start off by just saying how wonderful this, this event is and, and how amazing it is to have listened to the stories uh, of such great inductees. I'm, I'm awe-inspired every year by the, by the quality of, of the alumni that have graduated from our college in the past. And, and this year is, you know, meets that bar as it does every single year. So I could not be happier um, for, our, for our inductees. Um, at this time, um, if we have, uh, if, if Kathy Parson is on, the, is on the call to be able to turn on her camera. Um, but I'd like to start off with a question that I see from Jess Hudson for Dana Brooks. So Dana, if you can unmute yourself. Um, Jess writes, congratulations. Uh, thank you for your friendship and so many, uh, and so many accomplishments. 
but can you pinpoint your proudest one as Dean of CPAS? You are still muted. In the bottom left of your screen, the, the little microphone button, just click it. Okay, I'm going to, Dana, I will come back to that question. Joe, I'm gonna start with a question to you now. So can you tell me what is your best piece of advice that you have ever received from a mentor? Well, uh, some of the advice was mentioned uh, that Mike Parsons gave me uh, in both of our speeches. We both might have remembered when the conversation took place a little differently. We might have had the conversation more than uh, once, but uh, I thought I was going to be an on-camera personality, and Mike uh, gently told me several times, apparently, that it would be best if I maybe search out jobs behind the camera, uh, either in the production or technical side of the television world. So that was some of the best advice that I'd ever received. And there's one thing that really sticks with me also. I mean, and this shows you how long ago everything is that we were talking about right now, because I never have an ink pen on me ever anymore. But the first day I showed up to be an intern with Greg Schock, and I think we were going up to a Pittsburgh Pirates game to see the Marlins play the Pirates because Daryl Whitmore was in town with the Marlins and we were doing a feature for uh, Mountaineer Magazine on his baseball career. And I pulled in and I met Greg and he's like, right away says, do you have a pen on you? I'm like, no. He's like, get an ink pen, always have one on you. You're always gonna have to be taking notes, time code, no matter <laughs> what, anything, just take notes and write things down. And uh, there was a, a a pretty long period of time where I did carry an ink pen with me everywhere because of that conversation with Greg and ruined many pairs of pants in the, the washer and dryer because of ink pens being in my pants. <laughs> so that was some good advice though. Thanks, Greg. That really helped me out a lot. <laughs> well, thank you very much for that. That's, that is some great advice. Not, not necessarily, you know, that's, that's something and now it's all you on my phone. Think about right <laughs> now. I just carry an iPhone, and any note that I need to take goes into my notepad. And I have hundreds of them with different notes about different golf courses around the country and different events around the world. And they're all in my notepad and my phone. But I still take those notes, just not with an ink pen. And luckily, my iPhone has not gone through the wash yet either. So that's good. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, Dana, can we come back to you for? For, for that question. Oh, we're now? Yes, we, we oh, hear you loud and clear. So yeah. hey. uh, the question was, if you could pinpoint your proudest moment, your proudest accomplishment as Dean of CPAS. Purdue students, always. Just Hudson, think that basketball, way back when, HJC, Robert Morris, way back when. It's always <laughs> students, always. That's it. Well, I can also remember, to be honest with you, that um, that you were one of my first professors here yes, at CPAS as Way well. Back when? And you were and you were kind enough to do an independent study with me for a course back when? to 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 graduate. And so I know that you've put in that time with so many students, and you were mentored, or you mentored so many different people, and were mentioned by in in so many of the of the talks tonight on mm -hmm. on the impact that you've had. Thank you so students. proud. That's wonderful. Yes. So proud. Awesome. Well, you've had you've had a great legacy, so it's wonderful. Oh, I've been blessed. Been blessed. Yes, sir. Okay. Awesome. Well, Kathy, can we move on to you for a question? Yes. Okay. Well, Jess Hudson had a question had a question for you as well, and he wa he was wondering, other than playing for Coach Blakemore, what was your fondest memory of playing at WVU? Hmm, my fondest memory. You know, I think everything was associated with basketball and, and just the development around what that game was going to give to me. I think the CPAS program provided a roadmap 
to show me the different directions that I could go. Uh, I think the program prepared me as a coach to learn. It's, till to this day, there's things that I learned in that program that I utilize as a coach for my student athletes. So I think those would be some of the fondest memories of understanding that my, my platform was being built, my roots were being definitely uh, put deep within the soils of my, my being to know what is important in terms of core values, what I want to pass on to other student athletes. I learned while in that program. So I, I think that would probably be the thing that stands out most. Uh, you know, and I have fond memories on the basketball court too, because when I was there, we actually beat Penn State for the first time in the history while I was a student athlete there and I scored the last, last second shot. So I've, I've got fond memories on both sides of that. Okay, excellent. That's great to hear. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I know you have a lot of fond memories from, from your time in basketball, just from the sure. conversations we've had over the years. Yes. So wonderful. I played Kat Morrison. Hey, guys. Right, Kathy? What'd you say? Play basketball. Play around. No own. doubt. No doubt. Played no very well. See? See? <laughs> All the time. Your brother, Tom. Yes. Mm -hmm. And thank you for being such a role model in my life, Dana. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. Jeez. <laughs> so, so, Dan, I have a question for you now. I'm wondering what, what is the most important or most common either or piece of advice that you give to mentees that when you're working with them? Yeah, a couple of things. I think it's, um, I talked a lot about who I work with. I think it's who you work for. So finding the right boss, the right person to work with, I think that makes a huge difference, whatever role you're in. Um, when you have the wrong one, it's, it's a miserable experience. When you have the right one who's really supporting you, I think that that makes a, a, a big difference. The other is something a colleague said to me one time, and I've started to pass this on as well, is um, I was going into an interview a little nervous about it and said, she basically said, just be you. Um, and I think that's, you know, being your authentic you, whatever that is, um, is the only way to, <clears throat> excuse me, truly be successful. Because if you go in an interview and try to be pretend somebody else or try to pretend to be somebody else in the role as you do, um, eventually people will see through that and won't really embrace what you're trying to accomplish. And so kind of consistently being, Whatever that authentic you is, be consistently you. Awesome. Th those are some great pieces of advice and uh, not always probably probably good to, to remind yourself at times, but not always <laughs> easy to probably remember during the heat of, uh, of the moment. But uh, that's, that's wonderful. Thank you. And Herb, a question for you. What was your most memorable career learning event that happened as a student at WVU? Wow. Uh, as everyone else, I had Dana Brooks in uh, international sports, uh, walked into some games that I'd never heard of, but used quite a bit in my ninth grade PE classes because they had never heard of them either. Uh, I, I think it's really, though, to answer that question is when I realized that athletic training was what I was looking for, you know, as a student. You know, I think when I came to WVU, I was thinking physical therapy, I was thinking med school, but I always kept thinking that's not me. But the day that, that I, I probably met John Spiker or Sam Kegris, I said to myself, that's what I've been looking for. And you know, it changed my life. Excellent. And I'm going to give you a, 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 a quick follow-up question here, which comes in from uh, Gene Erian. So can you, uh, what, what have the... Uh, what have athletes taught you as an athletic trainer? You know, I saw that question. I'm glad I saw it before you asked me. I had to think a minute on it. Uh, you know, most athletes put their heart and soul into everything they do. And I think that has rubbed off on me a little bit that if I'm going to work with that kind of person, I need to put my heart and soul in, you know, in taking care of them and, and anything that I do. One of the things I tell all my students, uh, bloom, where, uh, bloom where you're planted, you know, and I don't think they understand that until you kind of explain, do everything well. It doesn't matter whether you hate it, whether, you know, you, you know you're looking to leave, you know, still be good, you know, until, and, you know, until you're finished with it. Awesome. Thank you very much. That's some great, that's some great uh, learning experience from the athletes. Now, I wonder, uh, this question goes out to the entire group. 
uh, the, the multi and interdisciplinary educational experiences of the inductees is impressive. Could anyone speak to the importance of working with those from different educational backgrounds? What would you tell students about working with those from diverse educational backgrounds? I think that this applies across all of the all of the disciplines that you uh, that you're representing. Would anyone like to take a first crack at it, Joe? I see you you unmuted yourself. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not sure if I want to go first. But uh, uh, see, uh -uh. I ha I have some thoughts. I, you know, I have always believed that when I mentioned this a little bit in my speech, that when you're presented with an opportunity, you take advantage of it. And it doesn't matter what your background is or where you come from, you have to work hard. Um, and when you're given an opportunity, you make the most of it. And it doesn't, everybody is, or should be treated equally. And even when we're in television production and we go globally, you sometimes, you're working with people from different backgrounds and you understand that they have different education, different experience, but at the end of the day, we're all people and you just all have to work together and, and do your best. And it's funny, uh, <laughs> we were talking with the uh, previous question. One of the things uh, that I remember about something that my dad would always say to me when I left to drive to West Virginia from Maryland, he would just say, do your best. And that's it. And that should be the same for everyone. Just do your best and, and treat everyone the way you want to be treated. Yes. yes. That's some, that's some, those are some great thoughts. Good Thank point. You. Yes, yes. Would anyone else like to add on? I certainly would. Um, I would say that in my experience as a person of color and constantly going into environments where maybe everyone doesn't look like me. What I learned from home was I was blessed to be a blessing. So with that mindset, I always go in, how can I bless the situation I'm about to be a part of? Even if it is something that's difficult at times, I find out the way that I can make a different difference in the lives of others around me because I know that's why I was sent. So that, that's what I would add to that. Excellent, thank you very much. It's a wonderful giving, giving approach to looking yes. at, at the world. Yes. Kathy said, be respectful. Yes, please. Give, give, give. Give back. Give more. My friend Kathy Marsden and Dan, yeah. my friend, yay. And <laughs> Joe, yay. And Herb, yay. <laughs> give back, give back. Yes, sir. Always. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. From looking over all of your bios, that's been something that all of you have done. That's been a, a common trend is that yes, yes. not just working hard, but giving back. Give back. Give back. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very true. Excellent. Good advice. Yeah. Jack, I would add, too, I think, you know, certainly as a university president, you deal with people with everything from, you know, in employees who don't have a high school degree to people who have a Ph.D., and you quickly find that all can be contributors in their own way to the success of the organization, recognizing them and letting them know you recognize that can make a world of difference for the entire atmosphere at an institution and the morale of the institution. Um, and I will say several times in my career of not getting too hung up on what degree someone has when making a hiring decision, I've ended up hiring better people um, who had, again, an impact in those roles. And I've had to kind of push against search committees sometimes. You always wanted to go, everybody has to have a PhD. I was like, well, sometimes not for this role. And I got a better employee by doing that. And so that's, I've learned a lot from that. Yeah. Excellent. That is wonderful advice. And, yeah. and uh, I can say that it is easy to get caught up in, in people's educational backgrounds when making hires. So th that's wonderful advice. Herb, I don't know if you, I don't want to put you on the spot. Do you have anything you'd like yeah, to Yeah, no. I've been fortunate enough the last five or six years, my whole world has been working in Muslim countries, working internationally in, in Iraq and Kosovo and Abu Dhabi. And, and, you know, and you think, oh my goodness, what do you hear about the Muslim? You know, they're wonderful people. You know, 
in there, everything from being very conservative to very liberal. You know, it's just, you just got to judge people one at a time and just, you know, and, and I, I like what everyone else said, you know, what are you giving? What are you taking? But, mm -hmm. but, but please make sure you you go in open-minded and, yes. and, you know, yes. and I, I, I've been okay. so fortunate to be an exposed outside of the country. Excellent. Great advice. Yes. Yes. So, people. oh, sorry. Go ahead, Dana. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go please. Ahead. Okay. People. Um, so, so Kathy, I'd like to follow up with a question for you if, uh, from the chat. Sure. And uh, it's mentioned that a lot has been mentioned about civil rights and advancements uh, in sports at WVU. Uh, what was Coach Parsons' experience like as an African American and a female at WVU? I think the journey of of living has a way of, of unfolding before your very eyes and. I think being that I had the core values that I had coming from my family, uh, I always knew that no matter what, I was going to be fine. Were there challenges being an African-American female? Of course, there were some challenges. I learned to overcome those challenges because of what I'd been taught as a person. And then, of course, I was blessed to have incredible people that were around me for my journey to make it better. So I think the key to that is just finding those people that you know care, those people who will always assist you in your efforts. Because as a student athlete, I, I made uh, enough mistakes like everyone else that age. And of course, being a coach now of my mature age, I watch young people do the same things that I did at that age. And I remind myself, well, you know, you used to make that same mistake. But I had a Garrett Ford who was my academic support person mm -hmm. at WVU. He was so instrumental in making sure I got to that next level of thinking. So I think that's really what we're talking about, developing the minds of people to teach them to be independent thinkers so that we don't have to agree with everyone, but we can make a case for anything we believe in. And I believe very strongly that that's what being an African-American female today, you have to have. Otherwise you may not survive it. So I've survived it because I've attracted myself and connected with the right people to help me to make that next step and to believe for, for greater things great job. in what may be looked at as a very difficult environment. Mm -hmm. Well said, Kathy. Well said. Thank you, sir. Always. Thank, thank you very much. You know, it, it's what, what your response uh, tells me, and it comes back to a lot of what everyone has mentioned in their talks and in, and in this question and answer session is that you've all found important people in your lives who have guided you to where you are and you've found a very positive way, a very positive outlook of looking at the world and being able to take on its challenges. And that's, that, is, that is a point that, that really sticks out to me in listening to everything that, that you all have said. Mm -hmm. Now, I've also noted that all of you have uh, or have had jobs that may or may not be very stressful at times. Um, <laughs> and yes, and yes, I'm wondering, yes. and I'm wondering, and, and Joe, I'm going to start with you because I think yours is a little bit even different from, from some of the others. Um, I'm wondering how y'all deal with, with, with the stresses and strains that come with that. And Joe, the reason I'm starting with you is I know that yours is an immediate stressful. You're trying to make split second decisions very quickly with tons of information in front of you. Um, how do you handle that? And how do you get used to it? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the best answer for myself is I try not to make the moment any bigger than what it already seems to be to other people. To me, it's just my job and what I have to do. And at the end of the day, I'm just helping to put on a television broadcast. And I'm just one of usually sometimes the crew's as big as 350, 400 people. Yes, they're listening to my voice a lot of the time. Um, during the Ryder Cup, we literally were on the air for 11 and a half hours straight which is a long time to talk over a headset and to direct a television show, but you have to make it fun, even while it might be a little bit stressful. And if there's a 
problem. You just have to remember it's just a television show. I might have been wearing a mask when I was directing, but I wasn't performing brain surgery. I was just <laughs> picking moments to show on camera. And uh, you have to make it fun at the end of the day. And that's how I, I deal with the stress in the moment. And you, you, no matter how big the moment is, it could be the Olympics and there could be 25 million people watching, or it could be a show on Friday that's on the Golf Channel that might have maybe, maybe 100,000 people watching. It, it's still the same. You put your best foot forward, you give it your all and your best effort, and you don't let the moment be any bigger than what it really is. I have to admit, I was thinking about you during the interview where Rory cursed uh, <laughs> during the Ryder Cup. Oh, yeah. That was really <laughs> I, I chuckled out loud when he said that. That was pretty good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> he did come back with an apology. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, how about how about uh, the rest of you? Um, hey, Chet. You know, I ran to the golf course. That's fun. Me. <laughs> yeah. Like. Yeah. Uh -huh. That was a that was a beautiful place to do a show at Whistling Straits. I mean, to have a canvas like that to be yes, able to, yes. to show those images, it was uh, an honor to be able to. To, to direct that show, quite honestly. Yes, oh. very nice. It was, a, it was a wonderful event. Hey, Jack, to piggyback Joe a little bit, one of the things I say all the time, uh, how does it affect someone in five years? If it doesn't, it's not that big a deal. And most decisions that we make really aren't going to make a difference in five years. So, so, Joe, I definitely agree with what you said there. Yes. Be a difference maker. Yes. Uh, can I add to that, guys? Sorry, uh, Kathy. Our definitions of stress, you know, because I'm a basketball coach. And <laughs> what could be stressful uh, for me may not be stressful for you. Uh, but I think the thing that I've learned through the years is never to give away my peace. I coach basketball games and um, my, my paycheck is running up and down the court in their 18, 19, and 20. So I, I certainly can't give my peace away when I know that that's what I've elected to do. And, and I love what I do. So my peace is in the fact that I'm doing what I love. And uh, we, we do the very best that we can. And the outcome is the outcome. But our preparation daily says that we should be in the win winning column in some type of perspective, or some aspect of way of looking at it. So I won't give away my peace. I love that yeah. response. Don't give away your peace. And yes. I really have thought several times about uh, needing to rely on 18 to 22 year olds for your paycheck and what yeah. that must feel like at times. <laughs> Now that's not a horribly different than say than say Dan. I mean, I know it's faculty teaching the classes and staff helping run the university, but uh, I think sometimes evaluations are on how students are doing, and those are a lot of times those eighteen to twenty-two year olds as well. Yeah, and that's what I always say. Uh, you know, my life really revolves around quite a bit around eighteen to twenty-two year olds, uh, which might sound scary, but I've got two. Um, two children in that age range and I'm terrified. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, it can be stressful, but you know, I, I think you know, Joe's response, I think is a really good one too. Of, yes, of yes. Just the realizing that there really isn't much that people bring to my desk. That's really that catastrophic. It, if you take some time, relax, work, work the problem. Um, mm -hmm. You actually can work good through point. a lot of things. And, and I always remember one of the things that always stuck with me, we were going through an accreditation visit when I was at the university of Louisville and I was a department chair first accreditation of his, I thought this was really stressful. And the guy I was relying most on for that decision came into my office and said his wife was just diagnosed with breast cancer and was likely going to die. And at that moment, I realized none of this matters, that that is so much See? more important. And so throughout my career, one of the things I've tried to do, and I mentioned this a little in my comments, is spend time with my family, spend time with my kids, spend time with my wife, you know, takes time for myself, realizing that's really the most critical thing and things that happen at work. Are, are rarely as big as those things. Very good. I think that uh, putting things in perspective is very, very important. Uh, a wise friend and, and mentor of mine often says, it doesn't matter what you decide, it matters that you decide, right? And, and then move forward from there. And uh, it sounds like, um, you know, like there's a lot of great, great pieces of advice here and how people put that in perspective and live with the, with the stress of their, of their positions. And uh, so that's, that's wonderful. 
Uh, Kathy, I have a question here um, from Autumn Parson Tan. What advice do you have for an aspiring D1 female athlete trying to break your current scoring records? Well, I would advise her that, that it can't be done because when I did it, there was no three-point line. So that record will stand alone. So they're going to have to get a new record of utilizing the three-point line. So work hard and get good form and make, make some buckets. <laughs> So she should know to stop trying, to just don't shoot from behind the three-point line anymore? <laughs> no, what I'm saying is you've got to be able to count that line. When I was there, we didn't, we didn't count the line. They put the three-pointer in the next year after graduation for me. Okay. I actually have a question. I actually have a question about that real quick. Sure. So, Kathy, yes. So back in when you were playing, how many shots do you think you would have taken from beyond the three-point line? Because the game has changed so much. I, I shot deep. So I'm thinking I scored 2,000, I probably would have scored 3,000 because I, that was a very comfortable range for me. So maybe I was a little before my time. I think you were indeed in many ways. And, and we're grateful to be here now. So you know. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> uh, a question for the, for the entire panel. Uh, what personal qualities or attributes do you see as most important for success in work and life? Enjoy. Be thankful. Okay. Give back. Enjoy, be thankful, and give back. Yes, yes. Every day. I believe that that uh, fully exemplifies uh, my memory and my time spent with you, Dana. Well, same guy, same guy, <laughs> Jack. <laughs> man. Say, Kathy can shoot, man. Yeah, hey, Kathy, can shoot, man. Whoa, man. Dana, thanks for bringing back the memory. I try to tell everybody who uh, what, I saw it. Baller, they don't even want to hear it. They're like, no, I see you, it. I saw it. it in your own mind. <laughs> I saw it. I was there. <laughs> but but the, to, to, to add to the conversation, I think you just have to be passionate about what you do because coming to work for me is not work. This no. is what I want to do. So find something you love because when life is going to be life and it's going to be life, you've yep. got to be able to deal with it. But when it's something that you are so passionate about, it keeps you going. Okay, wonderful advice. I love it. And Jack, I really stress to my grad students or students, leave your ego at, at the door. You know, it's not, it doesn't need to be part of your persona. You know, let, let what you do shine, not what you say you're doing. Great, I love it, Herb. Good point. One of the things I usually talk about when I'm talking about leadership, I always say, the number one thing, and, and always start with it and end with it. It's not about you. Um, it's about having an impact on others. It's about enjoying the success of others. And even that's in your personal life as well. You know, and mm -hmm. I had so much more fun watching my kids play sports than I ever had playing myself. You know, and it's enjoying watching others succeed is really, um, which, which provided a lot of joy for my life. That's wonderful. Good point, Joe. Mm -hmm. Joe, do you have anything you want to add there? I cannot say anything better than what everyone just said. Um, I think respect is key. Respect uh, those that you work with. Every, everyone has an a opinion that, you know, you should listen to. Listen, that's a characteristic. And, and you always can learn something from yes. everything. Yes. yes, yes. Every day. Okay. All said. Mm -hmm. So as, as we come to... Um, we had, we had tried to plan for about a half an hour of question and answer. We're coming to that to that half an hour mark. What I'd really like to do is, is give each of you an opportunity to say any closing words or anything that, that you'd like to add at this point in time, because I'll be honest, um, I there are lots of questions I'd want to ask you. I think that this discussion could go on for a really long time. Um, but uh, is there any, any, any lasting tidbits that you'd want to, to leave the, uh, the audience with? I shall say thank you, Joe, Dan, Herb, Kathy, my friends, who changed my life. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Wish we were together, but we all wish that. Uh, and once again, this is a great honor. And as I said in my talk, I'll cherish it, the memory forever. I'm just glad we're together this way. My and comments I, I like then. So I would like to congratulate everyone. And it truly is an honor to, to go into this Hall of Fame with all of you and to join so many that have come before us. Um, yes, and well said. I, I, I'm sad that we can't be together tonight in Morgantown, but I'm hoping to make it there in April. So in a few months, maybe I'll get to see some of you in person. Excellent. My closing well remarks is, is that of inspiration. We all cre create the world that we live in. Take responsibility for it. Put your best put foot forward and imagine for the great things because that's how we got here. We imagine it and it is so. Guys, it's been a pleasure to be with you. Uh, I have practiced at eight o'clock, so I, I do have to get off. Oh, <laughs> but I Kathy. do want you all to know that this has been impactful. Uh, gentlemen, I will always remember who I, I've been inducted with. Dana, you know that we, we're, we're, that oneness is there. And see, I feel see. like at this committee, we felt that oneness tonight. So you all, in whatever your endeavors are for the completion of this year, do amazing things. Well said. You may have said that once or twice to your athletes. I, I heard the Absolutely. coach in you with that. I'll say it again tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Kathy. I do know you need, to, you need to jump off here soon, but I want to say thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll just finish by saying congratulations to everybody else. Again, it was just an honor to be with you, all of you tonight. And, and thank you to West Virginia, to all that you've done for me. But and I put in the chat earlier, but thank you particularly to D Dana Brooks. Um, oh, his class you, changed buddy. my life. He was, uh, when I had his class, I was like, that's who I want to be when I grow up is Dana Brooks. And I spent the last 30 years of my life trying to be like Dana, whether it was oh, as a teacher, no. as a researcher, as a leader, um, even to some of the stuff I'm doing now on anti-racism, diversity, equity, and inclusion, started with inspiration from his class. So, I mean, having faculty like Dana Brooks of West Virginia made all the difference in the world to me and, and really throughout my life and career. So thank you, Dana, very much. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Well, I would, I would like to, uh, to conclude by, by saying, first of all, I really am sorry that we had to move this event virtually. I would have loved to have been able to celebrate with all of you in person. I know that there's a large group of people that would have that wanted to be down here with all of you um, and, and, and celebrating this event with you. I hope that we can do that at some point in the future. Um, but I was uh, so impressed and inspired by not only your words during your induction speeches, but uh, during the your talks tonight. Um, this is always a time when I when I learn a lot from people from very different backgrounds. Um, and I hope that you, if you haven't already, I hope that you all go on to, the, to our website and really see the list of people that you are joining as mm -hmm. Hall of Fame inductees, because it is an impressive, impressive group of people. And you all definitely fit that criteria. And uh, we could not be prouder of you um, we are we are rooting for all of you every day, uh, you know, Dan. That's you know, it's it's great to be able to root for other people and see the successes in them, and uh, you all have shown us that. And uh, so I just I just want to say thank you. It's it's such a pleasure to be able to serve as dean of this college. Um, you know, for me it was it was a very humbling experience to follow in the footsteps of such a a, a great leader and dean for so long of our college. Um, and one that I know we all had major interactions with and, and really impacted our lives. But um, th this is one of, the, one, of the, one of the wonderful experiences of the year for me is to, um, to talk with and be able to uh, you know, meet and get to know our Hall of Fame inductees a little bit better. And you all are a wonderful class. And I just want to say thank you and, and best of luck. And I'm so happy that you, many of you could, or all of you could, could have a part of your journey to where you are today in CPAS. So thank you. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a wonderful Joe, evening Dan, and thank here. you very much for, for taking part. Thank you. Jack. Bye. 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 Bye.